Good morning. Welcome to the Plumbing Today Sunday Morning Show. I'm Jamie DiDomenico. I'm president and owner of Plumbing Today. I'm here with Greg Faulkner. Hey, you Jamie. Your service manager for the Plumbing Service Department. Correct. And we're going to talk about water heaters, maintenance, uh, extending useful life, regulations, new technologies, and water heaters. There's a lot going on, and uh, so we want to get right into it. First, let's talk about uh, the recent change in water heater regulations regarding energy efficiency. Correct. Yes. Um, April 16th of this year, they changed the energy standards of residential electric water heaters. It's going to affect the size of certain water heaters. Certain water heaters are going to disappear. They're no longer allowed to be made. So folks like are, what sizes? 30s, 40s, 50s. They're not really been affected other than the sizes increase. Slightly. 30 gallon, 40 gallon, 50 Correct. gallon. Correct. 30 okay. gallon, 40 gallon, 50 gallon. Anything larger than 50 gallons, so 60s, 65s, 80s, 120s, they cannot make them anymore. Kind of like incandescent light bulbs? Exactly. They're gone? Exactly. No, no longer can they be made? Correct. Okay. So, uh, so what does this mean to the normal homeowner that can get a 30, 40, or 50 gallon electric water heater? The average homeowner that has the water heater in the garage, it's really not going to affect it too much. The size has increased a few inches in all dimensions. Is it more expensive? Yes, there is going to be a price increase. We're still waiting on manufacturer's pricing, but uh, we're probably looking at about a 30% price increase because of these uh, energy efficiencies that have been added. Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, space could be an issue. Yes. A lot of people have it in their closets. In closets, under air handlers, up on a shelf. Condos are Condos are going to have a bit of a problem. Um, now, I remember years ago, they used to put a lot of 30-gallon low boys in, in condos. Yes. And they call them low boys for a reason, because they got to be short, low. short, low, underneath something. Uh, are those going to be made still? They're still made, but they are increased about two to three inches in diameter, the dimension. So if it's a really tight squeeze on so the one that's in inches? there right now, right, we may have an issue getting the new ones in. Well, some of them look like they built the closets around them. Some do. So uh, that means they're going to have to remove equipment. They may have to take mm -hmm. out the door jams yep. to squeeze in a, a similar size water heater. Absolutely. Wow. So um, obviously this is done for a reason to try to change our carbon footprint and reduce yes. our energy, energy usage uh, on water heaters. Correct. They're making them. Uh, it's, this change is giving it approximately a 3% energy increase. 3%? 3%. Wow. Okay. It must mean a lot when you got billions, uh, millions of yeah. people. Hundreds on it. of millions and, of them. Right. Hundreds yeah. of millions at three percent. I guess yeah. that's a lot. Yeah. When a customer has absolute faith in a company, um, to me that is that is the that is the pinnacle of great service. It's the integrity of the whole operation. Uh, you, you, there's a feeling of trust. I wouldn't trade them for nothing. You know, you couldn't pay me to go to another company because I just don't think you're going to get that quality that professionalism and the peace of mind to know when you're done, you don't have to worry about anything. Cool today, your carrier factory authorized dealer. So I guess it's first and primarily, it's in the homeowner's best interest to extend the useful life of Absolutely. these units so they don't have to worry about uh, changing them. And I know we install a fair number of water heaters every year. What, can, what, what type of things should, now we, we do an annual maintenance on water heaters. It's included in our Correct. plumbing our agreement. Correct, yes. So uh, what are some of the st procedures that we do on a, on a plumbing inspection and maintenance? On a plumbing inspection, maintenance on the water heater is going to involve draining and flushing the water heaters to remove the buildup, the sediment that builds up in the bottom of the tank. And that is very detrimental a um, couple different ways. It can actually start to rot the tank out from the inside out. It displaces water, which means you don't have as much hot water in that tank. So a 40 gallon, you might have 36 gallons. Yeah, if you've you got 10 inches of debris in the bottom of the tank, you don't have 40 gallons of water in there anymore. Okay. And then if that debris gets to the heating elements, it can actually destroy the heating elements. And then you're rebuilding a water heater. So they don't heat as well? Correct. Um, if, the, if you have scale buildup on a heating element, the heat cannot transfer through the heating element as efficiently into the water. You brought a prop for that, right? I did, actually. Um, here's a heating element that has scale buildup on that's it. That's the beginning. That's, um, that one's not outrageously scaled, but that's what it looked like originally. Okay, we could see a difference there. Yeah, there's a big difference. 
So this is a brand new, and this, a brand is, new, this might be that four one, years old. Yeah, that one was probably about four or five years old. Okay, and then can it get worse than this? Oh, yeah. We have this one. This is one that actually blew apart because it was sitting in so much debris. See, the scale is actually formed to rust, and we have black and uh, burning going on down here. This, this heating element actually failed. Okay. So... There's a life cycle to these heating elements. Yes, they, they will not last the length of the tank. Okay, so uh, a plumber obviously uh, can replace these. Yeah. Uh, do you notice your hot water is not as, as hot and you're using more electricity? Correct. Um, as they scale, like this one, this will use more electricity to heat your water. Now, if this is the a heating element has failed, you could run into issues of you run out of hot water. You don't have as much hot water as you once had when the unit was new. And because it's only working on one heating element, most heaters have two heating elements in them, an okay. upper and a lower. Oh, they have two elements. They have two elements in there. So the low one, lower one deteriorates first? Generally because of all the debris that builds up in the bottom of the tank. So, and this happens primarily due to the water, water and quality. quality. Probably one of the worst qualities in the in the country correct Especially job security Southwest. for us plumbers okay <laughs> we don't we don't want to we don't want to have that type of job security but it is what it is yeah so when you flush it you're you're basically taking the minerals out which tends to, to yes. rot yes yeah everything that will actually be detrimental to the interior of that tank we will remove it as we're flushing it so that'll extend the life of the unit yeah and it'll extend the life of all the components inside sure absolutely um, Water filtration is probably a, a even better prevention. Yeah, most definitely. Uh, if, if you fix the water going into it, it will last significantly longer. So taking care of the, the minerals that are coming through. And whether it's well water or city water, it's, it's all minerals based, Correct. right? Yep. Because we generally get it from the groundwater. It's going to have minerals in it. Yes, most definitely. Um, so either you filter the water or you flush the system or you do both. It'll, it'll extend the useful life of the water heater. Regular life, I understand, is about seven to 10 years. Yeah, seven to 10, um, if you don't maintain it. If you maintain it, you should get significantly longer. Like 20% longer, 25% longer? I would say at least that. Um, with water filtration, if you have good quality water running through there, there's no reason why it won't last forever. Okay, all right, well, nothing lasts forever. At least that's what my wife tells me. Um, so. This, this is a good step, again, getting, getting water heater maintenance. Yes. So there's been regulations. Mm -hmm. it, the prices are going up. The right. best thing a homeowner can do now is just try to maintain their system, So especially if they're in a tight space. If they're in a tight space or if they have one of the heaters, 65, 80, 120-gallon water heaters, maintain those as long as you can because you can't replace it. A cool today in the last 50 years has evolved from a small town oil furnace new construction company in the 60s into a multi-trade uh, world-class service organization that's really primarily due to hiring great people i want you to remember not just me but the company that i work for whether you get a plumber an electrician an ac guy we treat each customer the same way plumbing today proudly offering our 99 dollars drain cleaning 24 hours a day now there's different technologies and we'll, we'll do some show and tell later, mm -hmm. but let's talk about the different technologies. Most people in Florida are probably on electric. Correct. Okay, it's efficient heating uh, relative to mm -hmm. uh, gas and propane and natural and yeah. uh, uh, solar is probably the most efficient. Yeah, solar is going to be the most efficient. Obviously we have an awful lot of sunlight here. Okay, and that's thermal heating as opposed to vo photo voltaic it's correct it, it heats through thermal yep. transfer correct there's a heat exchanger on the roof and the water travels through there and the sun bakes it and it heats it up okay and um, that could save you 60 70 percent on your electric bill uh, generally oh solar yeah hot water. most definitely and um, the only th issue you have is some people have concern putting anything on their roof yes today is it is it as much of a problem as it was well it, it, it depends on the roof. Um, shingle roofs are easier to work with than if you have a barrel tile roof. But uh, there's nothing professionals can't handle. We can definitely mount them on any type of roof structure. So if we're putting it on the scale, solar is the most efficient? Solar is going to be the most efficient. 
And then uh, secondly is a heat pump water heater? Hybrid water heaters, very darn close to solar's in efficiency. Okay. So uh, the, the hybrids work by grabbing uh, room temperature and whatever room they're in, right? Correct, yep. Uses ambient air temperature to uh, generate, elect, uh, generate the heat in the water heater. Okay. Very, very efficiently. Um, there are units on the market right now, 310% efficiency. Versus an electric water Electric, 93, 95% efficiency. Okay, so it's three times as efficient. Mm -hmm. So those uh, that, those are coming in to replace uh, your traditional Correct. water heaters, yes. electric water yep. heaters. Yep, and for those folks that have those 65s, 80s, 120s. That's their option. That's really their only option. Oh, I hope they, they have a lot of room. That size. Yeah, they're, they're pretty big. And then uh, last, but, uh, th then there's uh, portable heating, such as tankless. Uh, people call them Insta-hot sometimes. Yes, a little <laughs> bit of a misnomer there. <laughs> uh, well, it depends on what you consider an Insta-hot. Correct. Uh, but there, there is gas tankless. Yep, gas. And there's propane and natural, propane, right? Propane, natural, gas, and then also have electric tankless. Now, what's the benefit of a, a gas tankless versus a gas water heater? Gas tankless to a gas water heater. Um, endless supply of hot water and more storage space, less of a footprint. Okay. I mean more storage space, my wife can stack boxes where the water heater used to be. Yep. You don't no longer have that 75 gallon cylinder sitting on the garage floor. You now have the box that's mounted on the wall and some of them we can even mount outside, completely free up that space inside the garage. I have one of those. Uh, I switched from a gas tank to a gas mm -hmm. tankless and we did get a lot of space initially yep. and then you know, kids and garages, <laughs> you find stuff to put in that space for Absolutely. some reason. Absolutely. But it is, it is a, a pretty cool yeah, product. They're, they're fantastic products. Now, propane versus natural gas, uh, that's just the fuel. Just the cost of the fuel. That's really the main difference. And propane is really wise. expensive. Yeah, propane is not as cheap as it once was. So, natural gas will be the cheapest way of heating your water with a tankless. Propane is going to cost a little bit more. And we'll talk a little bit about electric tankless, which is uh, different. Yeah, completely different, uh, different beast, but if, if you don't have natural gas or the ability to put propane in your home and you want tankless, it can be done. Okay. Electric, um, a lot of upgrades have to be made on your electrical system to make them work. They don't work with the existing power that's there right now. So electric tankless is uh, portable, but it might not be uh, applicable for some homeowners. Some homeowners don't necessarily have enough incoming power or the, um, it may be cost prohibitive to actually make it work by the time you do the electrical upgrades. Some may have to upgrade their panels, mm -hmm. there may not be enough room. Sometimes you just simply don't have enough power coming into the, the home. It happens a lot in condominiums. Okay. So we covered uh, the new regulations, mm -hmm. uh, which a lot of people don't know about. Correct. Uh, we've covered uh, ways of heating your water, the different technologies available. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked about maintaining your systems, Correct. whether it be ga uh, tankless or not, or, or tank. Yep. I mean, I, your tankless, does that require any yep, maintenance? Yep, there actually does require maintenance on tankless. Those actually manufacturers require that they be flushed also. Uh, annually? Um, annually, and depending on water quality, manufacturers are actually requiring water filtration on tankless water heaters. Because the Florida water yep. is full of minerals and it will corrode. And the tankless water heaters, gas tankless, have pretty long warranties on some of their components. So okay. they want to make sure. And we talked about the various efficiencies of each. Correct. And uh, I think today it costs a lot of money to, to heat water for the home, especially mm -hmm. if you have an active home yes. with you know pets and a lot of dishwashing and oh, clothes yeah. washing and, mm -hmm. and kids and so on and so forth. So for the homeowner, it could be... The second cost is part of the utility bill. It behind, really is. Behind it's the air conditioning. Air conditioning, number one, energy consumer in the home, water heating, second. Okay. So this is really critical for the homeowner. Absolutely. So we'll, we're going to show you, now we're going to show the different units, what they do, how they do it, so that the homeowner has a better understanding for the different technologies in heating your water. At Cool Plumbing and Energy Today, taking care of business, or TCB, is really about helping others get the best from today. So for us, TCB is really TCP, taking care of people. Taking care of people when their AC breaks down at 1 in the morning. Or by supporting those who provide vital care in the community. We love taking care of people so much, we're celebrating in different ways throughout the community. So join the celebration today at tcptoday.com. Carrier, turn to the air. Okay, we're here to talk about the different 
uh, technologies that exist today for your water heating purposes for your home. And first is Robbie the Robot over here, <laughs> which is a heat pump uh, water heater, or right. hybrid this water This is a heater. hybrid water heater. Okay, so explain a little bit how these work. So basically, from this portion down, it's just a traditional 50-gallon electric water heater. We have heating elements in both of these areas. And this portion here is the, uh, the refrigeration system. That's the heat pump. That's what creates it the most energy efficient way of heating water. As we can see here on the uh, energy guide, for this they're estimating annually 170 bucks. Which is about $15 a month. Yep. And what's it normally for a, hot, for a water heater? $650, 700 bucks. So it's normally $50 a month as mm -hmm. opposed to 15 Yep. This is the only water heater, the only way of heating water you can do today where it actually pays for itself. Okay. So this, uh, this, is, this particular model is made by General Electric? Correct. This is uh, made by General Electric, made in the United States. It's one of the only hybrid water heaters that is manufactured here in the United States. Okay. And, uh, you know, being in the, in the heating and air conditioning business, I'm pretty familiar with the fact that what this unit does, it takes all the warmth in the outside area, like your garage, mm -hmm. and it feeds it into the hot water it trans right. and transfers heat. It does. Basically. If we were to strip this down, there are, there are coils of pipes running around the tank. Okay. And that's how it transfers the heat into that. And a side effect, when it's running, it discharges cool, dehumidified yeah, where, air. Where does that cool air come out of? It actually discharges right out of the side here, on the back side. So there's, so it, you could pick, can you put a duct and put it over your workbench? Or they actually have a ducting kit for this, yep. So they have a ducting kit where you can blow cool air in your garage while you're working or doing whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, while this is heating your water, it's blowing some cool air on you. Yep, sure does. Okay. Um, so what is this control panel here for? This allows you to set the temperature of your water. You can tell it uh, what mode you're running in. Here in Florida, it would just run in hybrid mode. Um, if you're in colder climates, you can actually tell it, okay, we're entering winter time now, so I need this not to try to run on the heat pump just run on regular heating elements because there are two electric heating elements like a standard water heater and this actually allows you to tell it how many days to run you can do it up to 199 days so if, you're, if your uh, garage is really hot you can just run it on heat pump yep. and take the elements right out correct it will never actually the only time it would kick on the heating elements is in a high demand situation because the heat pump takes a little longer to heat the water okay but it's doing it very cost effectively All right. And then what's this uh, USB, this uh, LAN port? Well, for? this little port there, it's used for a couple different reasons. It can be used for servicing. You can hook it up to the computer to get error codes. But the really cool feature of it, they make a little attachment that plugs in here. It's magnetic, it just hangs here. It's a Wi-Fi connection. You can so actually you can control it from a smartphone app on your iPhone, your Android device. If there's a problem with the unit, it'll send an error code to you. Okay, that's where I could see benefit. Otherwise, I don't know why I would ever mess with my well, water temperature. Let's say you're at the airport and go, oh, did I turn the water heater off? You turn it off right from the airport. Okay, so for snowbirds and mm -hmm. for pe vacationers, or yep. they, they can do that. They go on vacation, they could change it to vacation mode. Mm -hmm. So this has a lot of nice features to yeah, it. Yeah, it's and a again, really nice water heater. And again, smartphone technology even coming to hot wa to water heaters. Exactly. In that's everything. <laughs> All right, Cheryl, um, I, we went through, we discussed the problems that you have with your system right. and all that, and uh, I am uh, am prepared to present a proposal. It, it was the right thing at the right time. It just all happened. I don't know who's going to be more excited, uh, her or me. <laughs> this is great. So explain uh, this tankless water heater here. So this is a Norwich natural gas tankless water heater. So this would mount right on the wall and it would replace a tank you know, this size, even a little bit bigger. And this is where the, uh, the, the combustion gas is out? Yep, this uh, is actually, um, it allows the exhaust gases here to go out and incoming air to come in through here. Okay. Um, really great products, these things work phenomenally. So they, they heat your water only when you Correct. Call for it. Yep. Like if you're washing dishes. They work on flow. So you turn on a faucet, it senses, oh, there's water flowing through here. Let me turn it on. And it flash heats the water. It heats the water instantly. And these heat at a, what BTUs? I mean. This will actually go up to 199,000 BTUs. Which is double what a normal. It's almost triple 
sometimes more than triple on wow. a standard. Okay, so they heat at a high rate, but they're heating uh, your water on demand. On demand, only as you use it, and it, it throttles that that um, the gas consumption. If you're only heating one gallon of water per minute, it doesn't have to go 199,000 BTUs. Okay. If you're maxing this out at eight gallons a minute, you have every hot fixture on in your home, then you're going to be consuming a lot of gas for that moment in time. Yeah, I got teenagers. I know how, what that feels like. <laughs> they take long showers. It heats. Yep. Expe expend some energy heating that much yes. water. Yes. Now the beauty of this, you can actually come and just lower the temperature when they're in there if they've been in there too long. Ah. <laughs> lower the temperature when they're in there. Yeah. It's something I didn't figure out. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Okay, I just learned something. So these these units here, they're uh, more expensive than traditional gas. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to cost you more initially, but you save by on your gas bill. Now, obviously, gas a little bit cheaper than electricity, or well, significantly cheaper. Mm -hmm. But um, the higher your consumption, the more gas you use. If you're in an average consumption, you're going to save some money with this. And it, can these last longer? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The manufacturer, the, the heat exchange of this portion right inside of here has a 12-year manufacturer's warranty. Okay. So they probably last longer than yeah, that. Yeah, they will. Um, the Noritz anticipated lifespan is about 20 years. Okay. And a normal water heater would be half that. Exactly. Got to keep, got to have clean water. Clean water, Gotta get have these to maintain, maintain them once flush, a year. Flush them out once a year, correct. Okay, you can't set it and forget it. You have to take care of it. Correct, it needs maintenance. It's just like your car in the garage. Got to maintain it. Okay, last but not least is this little baby right here. Yep, that is an electric tankless water heater. Not recommended for either energy efficiency or practical use. No, only but, time that's energy efficient is when you're not using any water. So you would say a condo with limited space? Condo with limited space. Um, like uh, two people only? Yeah, a yeah. couple older folks maybe, or if you're you know, a single guy. Yeah. Or what about if you had like a little mother-in-law apartment? Exactly. Like Perfect that. for a situation like that. About a week ago, we got a phone call from a maintenance client of ours, and uh, her system had been down for about a month. She was hesitant to call us because um, she knew that she needed to replace her equipment, and she was hoping that maybe we had some kind of a payment plan that would work within her budget. We needed to set up an appointment for me uh, to go out and speak to her about uh, some replacement options. And at that point, uh, she had had an emergency where she needed to find a home and or shelter for a family with multiple children. Unfortunately, the home needed to be painted and the painter couldn't get it done. So she was going to grab a brush and put on some old clothes and she was going to go paint the interior of this house. Gonna spend all night doing it. And I just thought that was unbelievable. She works for an organization that finds homes for homeless people. I went back to the owner of the company and we sat down and we discussed it and then that's when he mentioned to me of our taking care of people celebration for 2015 and uh, it just sort of worked out that uh, it, it was the right thing at the right time. It just all happened. I offered her a $500 discount on her proposal if she would allow us to actually video my presentation of the proposal. Uh, for her. So she has no clue what's going on and uh, I, I, I don't know who's going to be more excited, uh, her or me. <laughs> this is great. All right, Cheryl, um, I, we went through, we discussed the problems that you have with your system right. and all that and uh, I am uh, am prepared to present a proposal. What we're going to do is we're going to install a high efficiency carrier Energy Star rated 15 sear heat pump system in your home. So we're going to take care of any ductwork modifications that need to be done. We're going to, we've got the uh, brand new water heater, a full whole home surge protection system, okay. the uh, ultraviolet purification system. Which, I, I know, um, Cheryl, we, we talked about maybe doing a payment plan and all right. that, and um, we decided that what we want to do is we want to uh, take care of people who take care of people. So 
what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install the system for you and all of these options for free. It's a pretty generous offer. You know, I, I stalked you on Facebook a little bit. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I saw pictures of you painting houses and chipping concrete and scraping floors and, <laughs> and things like that. And, um, you know, we just, we just want to say thank you for being such a, a wonderful community, generous person wow. that you are. Um, and, you know, there's a little bit more. We, we got you a little special something. Of course, looking at your pictures on Facebook, um, it's clear that you are a uh, hardcore New York Giants fan. <laughs> so, in spite of the season they're having. <laughs> in spite of the season. So what, uh, what, we, what we have here is uh, a little something. It's a um, Super Bowl MVP <laughs> autographed Phil Simms jersey. Oh my goodness. For you <laughs> with, um, with the certificate of authenticity. Wow. And uh, that's a little gift for you. Thank you. That is so fabulous. Okay. Um, I don't know. We just kind of thought you might enjoy having that shirt, maybe even <laughs> wearing that shirt when our company flies you and a guest to New York City to watch the 2015 season home opener of the New York Giants. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> we don't even know each other that well. <laughs> this is probably the best day of my career. <laughs>